Okay, this week's been a funny week. So today is Saturday actually. Um, that's dedication. Now this is the vanny, it's the Bailey Approach um, 665. Uh, we've got a couple coming down from Scotland um, to pick this up. The only day they could do is Saturday. So um, I've come in to do that. Uh, I'll just quickly put my head in. So what it is, you've got the um, dinette, electric drop down bed. And then um, you've got the end lounge at the back with a combined shower. So it's a six berth, six belted seats as well. Um, so I've got all that set up, got the heating on, got the hot water on, got the fridge going. I've got the fridge going, haven't I? Yeah, I've got the fridge on the gas, as you can see there. So we've got everything going ready for them. So this week's been a funny week. Um, we've been hit with a few problems on vans and we haven't really filmed it because it's been one of them where like, we, we've got a lot of vans to get out. But when we get a problem with one van, it just knocks everything else on. So and it, we've been hit with things. I'll, I'll sort of quickly show you what we've been up against really. Um, it would have made good view, but we just, I wasn't in the mood for it to be honest. So we've got the V-line here. I'll quickly show you, let's put the um, lights on the V-line. Let's show you what was happening with the V-line. So, sink. See, drop that down there. Don't know if you can see there. There's the pipe that runs up to the, um, to the drain there. When we put water in and lift it up, it should go down. Well, you don't need to lift it up actually. So when water goes down there, it drains down the pipe. But what was happening was the pipe would come off there and it was dripping out of there. And the only way to get these in, if you can see the seals, was to take it apart and redo it. Um, but I think what's happened, it's happened in the past. And, and whoever's done it's just put a bit of PTF tape on, on the pipe. And um, it wasn't a proper fix, to be honest. So we had to get it all off and the glue made all the mess and everything. I think we've done a really good job of it because what we've done is we've resprayed it, um, put a lacquer on it as well to protect it all. Um, so that was quite a stressful job to do there. Um, so why I'm in today on the Saturday, I'm going to, this is all done now. So we're going to get all this one cleaned off. And then you wouldn't believe it, we've got Danbury here. Um, let's have a look at the Danbury. Um, can you see the Danbury? So when we were checking this off, if you can just see, just move that out of the way, there's the blown air there coming through. And then you've got the, the heater under there um, with the pipe that goes around. Now we were getting no blown air coming out of there, so we had to take the floor out and we found out the pipe wasn't connected up to, see there, to the outlet. So we had to connect the pipe back up again um, so that was another job that I wanted doing and again that wasn't a quick fix so there we go just a quick update where we're up to we've just got to finish the allen egg off now um, the swift we've just got to get that clean out so that's ready to go and then we've also got to get out let's have a nose here for you and this is the problem when you get one job it knocks everything else on so we've now got to do the auto roller um, the chaps requested another battery put on there, so we're probably going to have to take off the original battery and put two new batteries on. Um, there's another one we've got to sort out. Yeah, we've got the Rapido here. He's the next one as well. Um, and this is another one that we've got to check off as well. So we're getting um, a little bit bogged down. <clears throat> but last week was really, really good because we got... We had the problems, we dealt with them, we got them sorted out um, and now we can see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel so we can move on. So hopefully this week we can get some filming done for you. John turned the gas off, Lee. Yeah, it's probably because I was using it all. So, here we go. Twist and turn the dial, press down. See in there that flame lit straight up there. Pilot's lit, let it go. And off it goes. And I'll tell you what, these fires on that setting are absolutely amazing. Now, when we were doing a review before, we were um, with Kev. 
we were talking about fires and everything else and blown air systems and Kev said he'd prefer to have a fire, gas fire and electric uh, than rather than have just a blown air system. The good thing with that, it's, it's two separate parts. Whereas your combi yeah. is one heater, yeah. this is two separate parts. So you've got the electric part and the gas side of it is two individual bit, bits. So if the electric fails or, or you know, there's no fancy piece, well, there is a PCB on it, but nothing for the gas that'll affect it using the gas. Um, so which would you prefer? Oh, these, definitely. John, which would you prefer? I do like those. The only trouble is when it's really windy, sometimes they blow out. So you prefer a fire rather than a blown air yeah, system? because it uses no power. The blown air system's always using power to get your heat. Looks like that's what we're picking. Yeah. Right, now shut that door, I want to... trying to get warm. <laughs> <laughs> right, next. I've got to get this back on first. Actually, Bill, can you just, let's just show people how to take that off. We might as well. This one? Yeah. This one. Now, why would you want to take this off? Now, this one, if I was doing a service, I'm going to take this off. Let me turn that flare off, otherwise I'll burn my fingers. Again. Again. So, this one here has got two clips on just on the inside of there. Let's just have a look at that. Yeah. Yeah. And this one just lifts off, and the actual fire sits on these little lips here. So, for me to take it off, for service would be cleaning behind it, getting all these bits of, see you haven't had this service, look, all that sort of stuff off, checking the flue connections, checking all the thermal bulbs and making sure these sight glasses are all intact. Um, so that, that's the main reason that you take it off, for cleaning behind, safety checks and all that sort of stuff. There's no need really for people to take them off other than for, you know, possibly cleaning behind. So, if you want to take that off, um, just to give it a bit of a clean, what once you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if if you've got one of these and you regularly have your van serviced, it should be taken off and everything done behind it anyway. Right. Yeah. Good point. You never do ours. You, who doesn't? You. You know. You never have me service it. I've right. not serviced this. I'll mm -hmm. service it if you want. You do nothing else, are you? Go on then. I'll service it. Back right, on. Carry on. So yeah, so put it back on, these ones, you just sit them on that lip, push back in, and it clips into place. Now the old fire fronts on these were a nightmare. Really? They had loose spring clips on the side, and they used to fall off, and they'd end up with screws all along them, trying to hold them in place. Do you know what I found with the old ones as well? You had to be brutal with them, didn't you? Yeah. There's yeah, no, no nicey nicey, no, was there? There's no good <laughs> trying to pull it off gently, or put it back on gently, you had to smack Give it back into place. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, and the ones that did come off if you moved them gently are the ones that always fell apart. Yeah. Oh, very good, next. Next what? What else are we, we checking? Oh, you, check, you may as well check the fridge is working on gas, aren't you? Okay. So, again. Now, would you say one of the most common things you have is gas, the fridge not working on the gas because of lack of use? Yes. Yeah, a lot of people, when I find fridges that don't work, is people turn around to me and say, it doesn't matter, I don't use it on the, on the gas. Um, my main response to that would be, what happens if you're on site and the site electric goes off? Site electric goes off, you're stuck in a site that's possibly in the summer, um, and you've got no electric for however long because it's gone off for whatever reason, and all your stuff in there is starting to get warm. And is there anything we can do with the burning unit or anything like that? Um, you can take the vents off outside and Can check. we show people what a burning unit is? Yeah. So we've got two vents. We've got two vents on here. Top one? Top one is where it flues. So... There's your flue. Okay, if you look in there, you'll see as well, you'll see the foam in there, so that it's sealed, so that any flame will produce carbon monoxide um, at low levels, and even if sealed. it's burning nicely. So you seal it because even at, you know, 30, possible 30 odd ppm, that's a gradual build up, which can give a headache. It's, it's not good for young kids and things like that, but it only takes a little bit or a little fault for that to suddenly increase. So if that's not sealed, and that's flowing into the van, and that's potentially life-threatening. You remind me of carbon monoxide. You give me an headache. Yeah. 
So you've got your flue on the top yeah. and then the bottom you've got the burner system and this is the screwed on there. screw on yeah. one. But you can see if you look through the top there you can see the flame on it slightly. Um, you can just see that just one. see the blue flame on it. Yeah. And what you're looking for is a nice blue flame on them. Not all flames are, are visible, dependent on whereabouts it's situated. Um, the Thetford fridges have a little lever, that, uh, little window that you can push up so that you can see inside. But as long as it's got a nice blue flame. The other good thing, if you can't see the flame to look out for, is black sooting around this top bit here. See where you can feel the heat coming off there. And if you can see black around that bit, then you know that it's burning incorrectly. And is there anything be... we can do with the burnies? You can blow them if they've got debris on them. Yeah. Um, Ideally, yes. Ideally, it's not something you really want to be messing with. If you're having trouble with it, yeah. best bet is to get it properly checked. Yeah. And even more importantly, if we're getting the suit above as if well. If you're getting the suit, the yeah. suit above, yeah, then uh, get it checked because that's that is potentially if it leaks into the van, life threatening. So one one point, what you're actually saying is, especially this time of year when we're using the heating and everything else, is because a lot of people don't use the gas as much, always make sure it's working because if anything happens to the electric... Yeah, yeah. The last thing you want to be is on a site with something if you're away for, for Christmas or New Year, whatever, we're away for New Year. Um, you know, that you get there and then all of a sudden something goes wrong with your heating or hot water or whatever and you've got no gas supply to it because you never use it and it's faulty. So, yeah, keep it going. So there you go. There's your tips for November. I'll put these back on and get back in there in the wall. Okay, toodaloo. Right, so it's that time of month now. November prices, motor home prices. Let's have a word with Shane from We Buy Any Motor Caravan and, and see how the prices are in November. Hiya. Hello, November. <laughs> how are you? I'm all right, are you? Yeah, good, thank you. So, everybody wants to know, have they gone up? Or have they gone down in November? They, they have, or will, at some point go up. And I know that sounds at some point, but the dealers are starting to pay a little bit more money because they realise and they're in trouble next year. Are they? Is that you? The, um... Did you just swear? No, 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 no. We've got a chasse on. Just we've just brought coming in. Actually, uh, it's a chasse on. A little, a little chasse on. A little one with a drop-down bed. And then the bathroom at the back. So it's a chasson flash. Oh, it's gone now. Right, so back to prices. So this month, have they stayed the same as off last month? Yes. On, on, as a trade point of view, they've probably gone up a little bit again. They've gone back to where they were just before the end of August. And why is that then? Because the dealers are all of a sudden realising that they're in trouble next year for new stock. And the implications right. that's going to give them, which is rather so worrying. What? So there's a bit of panic buying going on, is there? Uh, I don't know if panic buying is the right phrase. I'd probably say it's just sensible buying, because yeah. what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next year? Go on. When we go into the season again, everybody's going to want to buy. So you might as well put your money into it to, into it now. The dealers have never been so cash rich in their lives because they haven't got stock to fill up to take the money out of the banks. Right. So in a nutshell then, um, what do you think November's, just sum it all up? Uh, business as usual. It's, it's basically, we're, we're, probably, we're probably three, four months ahead. So November is probably March prices for next year. Right. Whereas normally at the end of the season, it just drops off a cliff. It's uh, still going very strong. Right. So, what would you be prediction be for March prices then? <laughs> uh, if you can get them very high, higher than this year just gone. I think there's a lot yeah. of dealers that thought that they were in trouble this year just gone, but they haven't even seen the start of it yet. And I think there's some dealers that are sitting there thinking, I don't actually know if I'm going to get through next year. Well, why is that? Uh, because give or take, this is motorhomes only, and I know caravans aren't a million miles away, probably 50% on average cuts on their new stock supply. 
Right. So if somebody, so if a dealer was getting two hundred last year, they're getting a hundred this year. Which therefore okay. stops the part exchanges. Well, it's just uh, the other way. Yes, there is that, but then there's the other thing where they never made many last year in twenty twenty. Yeah. They haven't made many in twenty twenty one, and I think they're going to make less in twenty twenty two. So you haven't just got lack of new stuff. You've got lack of 2020 models, lack of 2021 models, and so on. So it's just a vicious circle, isn't it? Yeah. So those all the dealers that relied historically on part exchanges and old customers coming back to them, they're just not going to get the volume that they need to. We've noticed that all year, though. The part exchanges have been massively, massively down. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's dealers we spoke to even only yesterday who have sat there at first and said, well, we don't, we don't need to, uh, we don't need to go out and buy. We've never had to before. We've already relied on parts exchanges. Well, okay. Well, how have you, how have you spent, how have you done the last year trying to buy stock? Well, we haven't been able to find any. Right. And what's your new stock coming through? Like it's worse. <laughs> so they just need to wake up a little bit. And they're still offering prices from pre COVID as well. We spoke to somebody the other day who's still offering glasses guide prices. A glasses guide, if you're not aware of it, that's basically the same as a car um, guide book. So we have a guide book, don't be shame for <clears throat> for most of the major models of a trade price and a retail. Um, we said this what twelve months ago. You might as well throw it through the window. Yeah, and I think you have, haven't you? You've got rid I of have, yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got we've got rid of ours. It's yeah. just a waste of time. The, you know, there is much. There's 15 grand out from trade price to, for argument's sake, there was one last year. I'm just going to give us an example. There was an Eldis, saying that yeah. 2,000 Eldis, what difference it makes. I think the book price on that was something like 12, 13,000, and they're online for 28 grand. Yeah. People are just going to laugh at you. Waste of time. 12,000, wouldn't you? Well, just imagine the reviews you'd get. Yeah. Um, but it's it's like that where as well you you've got to look at the dealers who are proactive going out in the market as well where people saying oh they're making loads of money we're not we're paying more money aren't we we're paying more oh yeah money. definitely definitely um I'll, there's an example of one yesterday that um we sold it, it sold exactly the same thing same age pre COVID for sixty thousand pounds yeah and that was as a retail figure I offered on the same thing. Same age, so still a 2015, yeah, just over 60,000 pounds. That's nuts, <laughs> that's nuts, which sums it up. Shall we have a quick look and see how the market's going? We'll yes, some graphs. oh, yes, it's going to take a while for us to um, for it to be um, come to fruition, but uh, this is this is. All the vans that are on Auto Trader at the moment from 2001 to, tw uh, to 2021. So yep. let's have a look for you. There you go. So it's pretty much staying at um, round about the 4,000 mark. Yep. Trade is just going up a tad, if you notice. Yep. And public prices are just dropping down. Public vans are just dropping down. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I, know, I never really noticed that. I think we've come across more people in the last two or three weeks that are going down the private route. I think for private, though, it's so difficult to sell a 30, 40, 50,000 pound van off your driveway. I know. <clears throat> you come across a lot of complications at that, don't you? Yeah. One is one is a lot of money involved, and two, but that's that's just on the selling side. But equally, the buying side, would you want to go and drop 40, 50, 60, 70, 100,000 pounds on a motorhome off somebody's drive? Yeah, knowing full well as soon as you drive it away. And the best part about it, Shane, is also they're, um, they're asking the same amount as what a dealer would want. Yeah, which yeah, def definitely, definitely. This, yeah, there was a great, great example of one that I looked at this morning. He was uh, 18 months older, an off trail, 18 months older, um, three times the mileage, and it was only a grand less than the one on the forecourt. It's a no-brainer, is it? No. You've got warranties, you've got comebacks, you've got consumer rights out behind you, you've got everything. Right. Let's whip on to the next one. Now, this is 10 years on Auto Trader. 
So this is 2011 to 2021. Just going up a tad slightly. And again, it's pretty much showing the same public's going down a bit. Yep. So that so tell me again, that's when you say 10 years. From two th everything advertised from 2011 to 2021, 10 year old Motrones. Okay, yep. Pretty much okay. the same as the 20 year one. Yeah. And then I'm going to give you two, births of what's on at the moment. Let's have, have a look. Now we use Auto Trader because it's probably the best platform for Motrone sales, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the one that we go to. It's the one that most manufacturers, that, uh, sorry, dealers will use. And it's also, for me, the best search function. Yeah. The problem is with eBay, yeah. you just get lost in the results. And again, pretty much the same at the moment. Pretty much two, four, five and six booths there, Shane. Yeah. Everything's pretty much... There's nothing hitting me at the moment. Everything's just level, isn't it, really? Yeah, the only one that's gone up a little bit over the course is the four berths, isn't it? Not much, though, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have. We've gone up what, probably 100, 150. Yeah. Any reason you think for that? Nope. <laughs> Thanks for your analysis there. <laughs> that's right. Now, we'll have a look at the manufacturers' motor homes that are on, on sale at the moment, Shane. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at this one. I'm nearly getting this now. There you go. So I've just gone for the big six, um, I call them, and it's British vans. Yep. British vans I've just gone for. So Auto Sleeper, Auto Trail, Auto Cruise, Bailey, Aldis, and Swift. Isn't that strange now, Swift? Do... Are these brand new ones? No, these are, these just... are basically everything on there to, up to 20 years old. The, the one that does stand out there initially is the auto sleeper. In what way? Just how that's dropped since October the 1st. Yeah. The rest are about the same. Swift's gone up a little bit. Yeah. Pretty muchness of muchness, isn't it? Yeah. And then here's my favourite one. This is my favourite one. This is the top six dealers that do new vans and also do, um, obviously, second-hand vans. I think you like this one, don't you? I do like this one. There you go. So you have a total of 3, 4, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 um, dealerships. Yep. And we have 107. Oh, I haven't added the last one up. Bloody hell. Any thoughts there while I'm just adding that up? I'm just going through the numbers now. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. What, apart from scary? Very scary. Marquis. Now, uh, the other thing as well, Sheen, I'd just like to point, if you actually go on to, say, somebody like, uh, let's just take Loudons, mm -hmm. you'll see a load of vans advertised but it'll say coming in soon or the yep. new vans advertised. When you go through all the waffle, I'm only finding two used vans actually for sale. Right. So, and that's the same with all of them. They've all got coming soon, coming soon, and no actual picture. Or uh, they'll have three vans across, and in the middle it'll be part exchange of motor or something. Do you know what I mean? So if you actually look at the listings, Loudons might say 36 vans. Yeah. But when you actually go through it all, it's actually two, mate. I mean, uh, you know, when you look at someone like Loudons, I mean, obviously they've gone down to, to one branch now. So hopefully you'd have yeah. thought that consolidating down to one, it will give them more availability for, for one branch. So you're going in and you're looking at 20 or 30. Yeah. If you look at the totals, O'Shea, they're pretty much the same now. Are they selling everything as soon as they get them in? Yeah. Or are they not actually out buying? Both. On other, they're certainly not buying enough. I mean, there's only no. one dealer 
how many dealers can you think of that have got a decent stock selection at the moment? Uh, one, really. Two. Yeah. Two. Oh, but they're, in, they're basically indie indie dealers, independents. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, they've all, but it's just like a sales. That's all we've ever known. We go out and find a stock. Yeah. Now the yeah. ball's been thrown in, in these courts. This is where they're struggling. Definitely. I mean, we've we've said this before. I mean, I, I, I keep racking my brains. Apart from a couple of the independent ones who have got 25 to 30, um, you look at... Wellsbridge aren't too bad on stock. I think they were about 35 on a look the other day, which is a, a decent selection really in today's terms. But then you've got someone like Forefront to absolutely blow everybody out of the water who are incredibly awesome. active. Yeah. When I last looked two days ago, they had 118 motor homes in stock. Yeah. Which is... When you, when you compare that one branch compared to 13, Mark was at 38 or whatever it was. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Scary. So how will we sum November up? Uh, b- back on its way up again. Um, I think it will continue to be strong going through now. I can't see why it won't be. Bit of panic buying? I wouldn't say it's panic buying. I think they just... You got, you, it's All difficult to call awareness. it... It's difficult. Shall we call it awareness buying? Yeah, it's difficult to call it panic buying when you've only got three on the pitch. Can't you just need to buy. buy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, um, the, you know, if you need stock, you need stock. But most people, most dealers traditionally would wait until February before they start buying again. They'll keep, yeah. they'll keep the money in the bank and then go again come February. But they are actually realising that if they get to February, March again, they'll have even less in, in stock. December will be interesting because normally it's a quiet time. December will be very interesting. Um, that's, that's the... Uh, November for us, traditionally... The first half is okay. The second half drops off as you go towards December. That's it. Um, yeah. It's well, then wide. coming into it's wind into December, down time, isn't it? Yeah. Well, December will be very interesting. It'll be really interesting to be honest, because I think at the end of the day, it's well, it's um, who's getting their acts together ready for February March time. Yeah. Basically. And you know, going back to what I said earlier about, uh, for example, Eldis that have had 50% of their stock, uh, their new motor home supply cut, Bursner is similar, Heimer, I don't know, 12, 18 months, something like that. And we'll then go you've got the one. Into another video. Okay, all right, that's fine. We'll go into that. So we'll cut this short because we don't want to bore you. Um, thanks very much for Shane from We Buy Motor Caravan. Um, we'll do this next month, Shane. Yes. Because December is going to be a really interesting one. So there's your motor and prices for November. And we'll go and crack on and do something else, eh?